Mia weighs 155 pounds and drinks 2.7 liters of water daily. A toxicological study of her neighborhood finds that the water is contaminated with simazine at a concentration of 0.3 milligrams per liter for approximately four years. With a cancer slope factor of 0.12 kilograms day per milligram, the 75 year lifetime cancer risk for Mia after drinking this contaminated water is most nearly A, 3.3 times 10 to the minus five, B, 7.4 times 10 to the minus five, C, 2.8 times 10 to the minus four, or D, 6.1 times 10 to the minus four. Pause the video and give yourself five minutes to complete the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Today we'll be discussing exposure assessments. Exposure assessment is a branch of environmental science and occupational hygiene that focuses on the processes that take place at the interface between the environment containing the contaminants of interest and the organisms being considered. It tries to measure how much of a contaminant can be absorbed by an exposed target organism, in what form, at what rate, and how much of the absorbed amount is actually available to produce a biological effect. Although these concepts apply to other organisms, the overwhelming majority of applications of exposure assessment are concerned with human health, making it an important tool in public health. Exposure assessment is the process of estimating or measuring the magnitude, frequency, and duration of exposure to an agent, along with the number and characteristics of the population exposed. Risk is a function of exposure and hazard. For example, even for an extremely toxic substance, the risk of an adverse outcome is un unlikely if exposures are near zero. And conversely, a moderately toxic substance may present substantial risk if an individual or population is highly exposed. This problem is asking us to calculate Mia's lifetime cancer risk after her exposure to this contaminant. Our two primary goals are to calculate her intake rate of this contaminant and then to use this along with the cancer slope factor to determine the risk for getting cancer due to this exposure. The first equation we will use is the chronic daily intake rate calculation, which is the following, where CDI stands for the chronic daily intake in milligrams per kilogram day, C equals the average concentration of contaminant at exposure, CR equals the contact rate, EF equals the exposure frequency, ED equals the exposure duration, BW equals body weight, and AT equals the period over which exposure is averaged. So let's put our information into this equation. The only change I had to make is the conversion of Mia's body weight from pounds to kilograms, which equals 70.3 kilograms. We can proceed with solving the equation and we get a chronic daily intake rate of 6.1 times 10 to the minus four milligrams per kilogram day. Using our chronic daily intake rate, we can now calculate our risk, which equals the intake rate multiplied by the cancer slope factor. Cancer slope factors are used to estimate the risk of cancer associated with exposure to a carcinogenic or potentially carcinogenic substance. A slope factor is an upper bound, approximating a 95% confidence limit on the increased cancer risk from a lifetime exposure to an agent by ingestion or inhalation. This estimate is usually expressed as the proportion of a population affected. And as a rule of thumb, any risk that exceeds one in one million citizens is considered unacceptable. So let's multiply our daily intake rate by our slope factor and we get 7.37 times 10 to the minus five, which is closest to answer B. If you multiply this answer by one million citizens, this corresponds to approximately 74 citizens that will be at risk for getting cancer in addition to any cancer risk borne by a person not exposed to this contaminant. This exposure should be addressed immediately so Mia and others in her community are not adversely affected. Join us for episode 48 of 52 PE exam problems in 52 weeks.